Filmmaker Rick Seaback is here. Among his many documentaries that have aired on PBS over the years are Sure Things, An Ice Cream Show, and most recently, A Hot Dog Program. His latest project is Great Old Amusement Parks. Using his trademark scrapbook style, he mixes historical footage and vintage music in visiting theme parks from California to Connecticut. Roller coasters are what it is all about. Roller coasters are the heartbeat of any amusement park. Uh, the roller coasters, a lot of people like to get scared and have a good time. Because it's fun. And it's scary. Well, like the hills. They're intense. They yeah. make us scream. It's not like, it's not like, like cheating death like you. Wind. Hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Every time you ride a steel roller coaster, you basically get the same ride. Steel coaster is a lot smoother. You get a lot more G-forces out of it, I think. The monster is the best ride I've seen in point. Magnum. The Magnum. The Magnum. Magnum. It's a great, great ride. It's big, it's tall, it's fast. It's scary. Huge. I'm pleased to have Rick C. back here to talk about a, what else? Amusement park. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Why Glad amusement parks? Uh... These kinds of amusement parks, because I think, you know, so many people think of theme parks now and the big corporate sort of ultra-planned amusement parks, um, sort of the legacy of Walt Disney. Um, but I knew the, the, the park called Kennywood in Pittsburgh, and uh, it's been there since 1899. I figure there must be other parks like that that somehow survived over the years. And so we went in search of great old amusement parks. So the, the show is about parks older than uh, Disneyland, and uh, with the kind of uh, quirky, unplanned charm that uh, you don't find in, I think, the newer parks. Roller coaster still the <laughs> primary attraction. Right. I mean, the coaster is what everybody goes to the park, I think, mm -hmm. and, you know, either first ride or last ride or several rides during the day. So we have lots of coasters in the show. Coney Island is on your list or not? Yes, for sure. The cyclone, the coaster by which all other coasters are judged. <laughs> um, and... Uh, a great holdover, and it's really fun. I know the coaster enthusiasts love it because that's still got the original trains. Yeah. Um, and there aren't, there aren't many coasters that still have their original trains, and they're over 70 years old, and the ride is rough at Coney Island, but it's great. Whether you filmed it or not, is there an ultimate coaster ride in the world? Um, I think people probably have looked for it. I, I said that the, the realization that I came to, I think we were on a, on a little coaster up in uh, Lunenburg, Massachusetts, <laughs> yeah. uh, the fly it. They have a Comet Flyer at uh, Whalem Park, and it has very middling statistics. I think this biggest drop is 56 feet or something, and its top speed is 40 miles per hour. But, I mean, I just realized, you know, it makes no difference. The coaster that you're on, I think, tends to be the ultimate coaster. Um, you know, whether there's a bigger one in Cincinnati or something, it doesn't matter. But are they constantly developing new thrills because of the onward march of technology and right. uh, mechanization and the rest of it? Yes, and I think but some of these people are talking about steel coasters of the technology of right. the future, and they're faster and they're smoother and, you know, flip you upside down a hundred times, but uh, there's still a lot of people that, you know, want the, the, the yeah. groans and the creaks and the moans of a wooden coaster. Yeah. Ferris wheels are important. Ferris wheels are important, merry-go-rounds, bumper cars. Yeah. Uh, we try to touch on all those things. How do they survive in a time that there's so much other kinds of amusement in terms of what's happening at the mall and what's happening... Uh, at the ballpark and everywhere else. I think they survive because there's something intrinsically uh, unusual about a place you go where you just have fun. Um, and it's, you know, uh, it can be expensive at times, but there are these little parks that just sort of shine there. And these, the parks that we, that we do in the show, from Lake Winnipesoka in Georgia to Lake Compounds in Connecticut, they tend to be smaller parks that attract a local audience primarily. And... Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, Charles Jackways, an amusement park historian, when we interviewed him, talked about he thinks one of the, the prime factors that got people to parks originally um, was to cool off. Yeah. And on hot summer days, you could go ride a coaster, or get on a, some spinning contraption. This was before air conditioning. Before air conditioning. But not fan, probably. Right. And it was a place to go. But they, they continue to survive because of the local clientele. Right. And Disneyland this, gets all the tourists parks. and all of the uh, theme. Right. These aren't destination parks that we have in our yeah. show. Um, with the possible exception, the, the clip that we just saw was up at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. It's a big park. Um, second oldest park in America, but really a big park, much like the modern theme parks. You've also history. made films about hot dogs. Hot You've dogs. made films about ice cream right. and sure things. What was sure things? Sure things was about, uh, I say, uh, non-natural reasons why people love to go to the beach. <laughs> Beyond the ocean and like the sand. Like what? 
oh, you know, like beach food. Well, and, like sort of an amusement park atmosphere. Right. The, well, I mean, uh, yeah, all the different kind of quirky joys of going to a beach, um, you know, beyond uh, the, the natural attraction. Now, what is the similarity in all of these subject matter that you have done these PBS documentaries on? What's the common denominator there? Well, I think your I, curiosity, my curiosity, my uh, my desire to celebrate some of the quirky joys of uh, life in America that haven't been standardized and franchised to death. And uh, I also think they, they tend to the theme that seems to be in all of them is a celebration of small family owned businesses, because that tends to be, I don't know, something that draws me um, places that where families have either passed something on through the generations, whether it be a saltwater taffy uh, company or uh, an old amusement park. Now, are these amusement parks relics or not? I mean, do they... No, they're, they're very much alive sorts of places. Uh, you know, they sometimes recycle old rides from old parks, but um, no, I wouldn't call them relics. They're all still uh, very much alive, and I think that uh, it's just that uh, they tend to not perhaps have the advertising budgets that yeah. some of the bigger places get. So I think it's a thing that public television can do, you know, sort of celebrate quirky places in America. Roll tape. Here's an excerpt. Well, the big old piece of furniture had a star-spangled reopening on Memorial Day in 1999, when people got a chance to experience anew this side-friction figure-eight coaster. This was a biggie. When I was a kid, this was the biggie. The top speed is about 10 miles per hour. The big comfy cars have no lap bars or safety belts. The first dip is barely there. Because everything's nice and smooth and gradual, and then when you start your dips, we have a nine-foot vertical drop. It's a real humdinger, okay? It was okay. It was, it was slow, but... Well, it's not near as the dips don't go down like the new ones do, but it, it's you nice. Know, I always you. say bigger doesn't mean better. It was neat experiencing, like, what our grandparents had to ride and stuff. There we go! You jerk back and forth a lot. Yeah. That's weird to think that's the coolest one in the world. And we rode it. <laughs> It, when you do these films, uh, it takes you, what, six months, a year? About six months, yeah, yeah. that's a good guess. You do one a year? Uh, two or three a year. Two or three a year? Yeah, so you depends did hot, on the year. Yeah. Hot dog was done last... We actually last, shot amusement parks and hot dogs at the same, the same time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Save some money. Last summer we did that, so now they've both aired on PBS yeah. this summer. Tell me about you. I mean, how did you come to do this? Uh, actually, I think I went to school for this. I went to the University of North Carolina and studied communications and filmmaking and... Uh, I've worked in public television all my life, first in South Carolina and now in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Always wanting to make short films? Yeah, I think always wanting to tell stories about things that interest me. Uh, you know, these, uh, actually, I, a short thing is, is an old love of mine. These all tend to be hour long yeah, programs. I know they are, told but, in, I mean, in, but they're short films in a sense. Right. That, yeah, they're shorter than a feature, for yeah. sure. These are shorter than a feature. And they're not documentaries as much as they are telling a story about place or a thing. Right. right. Yeah, it is just a, an old desire of mine. Right. So what's on the drawing board after Amusement Park? Uh, a local show. I do a lot of local shows in Pittsburgh. We're going to do a thing called Things That Are Still Here. Yeah. And then uh, nationally, I'm hoping to start dabbling in flea markets, um, celebrate flea markets across the country. Good for you. So. Uh, Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, you can see, what's the title? It's called Great Old Amusement Great Parks. Great Old Amusement Parks. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.